This is a demonstration of how to disassemble and assemble a Magnatex MP series sealless magnetic drive pump. This video is not meant to take the place of the Magnatex operation and maintenance manual. All actual maintenance or service of these pumps should be performed according to the detailed instructions found only in the O&M manual. Maintenance personnel frequently remind us of just how simple Magnatex MP pumps are to repair compared with those of our competition. Slip fit construction, standard tools and fewer parts with no necessary adjustments make Magnatex MP pumps both quick and extremely easy to disassemble, repair and reassemble. Our MP pumps are fully serviceable without elaborate facilities or extensive mechanical know-how. Prior to servicing pump, be sure to remove all process fluids from pump and ensure the pump is free of any hazardous materials. <laughs> the casing drain plug is designed for this purpose. Many fluids will require special procedures. Please consult your company procedures. To remove the casing, use an 8 mm Allen wrench to loosen and remove the six casing cap screws and then separate the casing from the pump assembly. Remove the gasket from the face of the rear casing. Remove the four cap screws that connect the adapter flange to the frame adapter using the 8 mm Allen wrench. Pull the rear casing from the frame adapter by holding the adapter flange. Remember that strong forces couple the inner and outer magnets and extreme caution should be used to avoid trapping your fingers between the adapter flange and the frame adapter. Removal of frame adapter from the motor is accomplished using an end wrench to remove the four frame bolts. Note that the outer magnet keys directly to the shaft and is fully supported by the motor itself. Disassembly of the wet end begins with removal of the impeller. Using an end wrench, loosen the impeller nut while preventing the impeller from rotating. The impeller, impeller nut, washers, and impeller shaft key are now free of the wet end assembly. Using a 4 mm Allen wrench, loosen and remove the casing cover cap screws. Lay the rear casing on its side for disassembly of delicate internal parts. Carefully lift away the casing cover. The bushing and sleeve will be loose and may come partially out with the cover. Be prepared to cradle these pieces as the cover clears the shaft as they are sensitive to sharp contact and may break in a fall. The bushing is prevented from rotating the casing cover by the bushing pin. This item is small and may become loose upon disassembly, so be careful not to lose it. Place the rear casing on its flat closed end and grip the exposed end in the impeller magnet shaft firmly. Slowly extract the inner magnet shaft assembly. The bushing at the bottom of the rear casing is loose and could be damaged if care is not taken to secure it in case it comes out with a shaft. Another pin is located at the end of the rear casing to prevent rotation of the bushing and may become loose, so be careful to save this also. Remove the sleeves, thrust rings, inner magnet, and inner magnet shaft key from the shaft. Be careful of the thrust rings and shaft sleeves, as these are also sensitive to sharp contact. Disassembly of the Magnatex MP pump is clearly fast and simple, allowing for trouble-free maintenance and quick serviceability. When you're ready to reassemble the MP pump, start with the inner magnet shaft. Slide a sleeve onto the shaft so that the notched end of the sleeve faces towards the threaded end of the shaft. Next, insert the inner magnet key into the keyway on the shaft. Then slide a thrust ring down the shaft and over the key by way of the notch provided on the inside of the ring until the ring contacts the sleeve. Then slide the inner magnet down the shaft and over the key utilizing the groove in the inner magnet. Be sure that the end of the inner magnet stamped front is facing the threaded end of the shaft. Slide the last thrust ring onto the shaft over the key until it contacts the inner magnet. Place the remaining sleeve on the shaft such that the notch on the sleeve accepts the end of the shaft key. Make sure that all contact surfaces of the components along the shaft lay flush with one another. Make sure that the bushing pin is in position in the small hole at the bottom of the rear casing. Place a bushing in the bottom of the rear casing with the indention facing and fitting over the bushing pin so that the bushing is fully seated in the end of the rear casing. In order to assure proper alignment of the sleeve on the threaded end of the inner magnet shaft, use a pencil or pen to place a mark on the sleeve on the opposite side as the notch but in line with it. We will use this mark later. Place the rear casing on its flat closed end and hold it steady with one hand. Grasping the inner magnet shaft by its threaded end, gently lower it into the rear casing so that the bottom end of the shaft slides slowly into the bushing at the base of the rear casing. Make sure that the bushing pin is in place in the small hole on the inside face of the casing cover. Place the remaining bushing in the casing cover so that the indention in the bushing faces and fits around the bushing pin. 
Place the rear casing assembly on its side and make sure that the mark we put on the sleeve earlier is in line with the impeller keyway. Make sure to align the stamped up mark on the rear casing with the up mark stamped in the casing cover as the casing cover slides into position around the shaft. Making sure that the up marks are in line and the mark previously placed on the sleeve is in line with the impeller key, place the casing cover against the face of the rear casing so that the shaft protrudes from the center of the casing cover and the four screw holes on the casing cover line up with the mating holes on the rear casing. Insert the cap screws through the casing cover into the rear casing and secure them with a 4mm Allen wrench. Be sure to tighten the four cap screws evenly to avoid uneven pressures to the assembly. Insert the impeller key into the impeller keyway and make sure that the key and sleeve mark still align. Place the impeller on the shaft and over the key by way of the slot on the inside of the impeller. Do not allow the shaft to turn as the washers and impeller nut are placed on the shaft. This can be done by securely holding the impeller in place. Check the impeller for free rotation. This completes the assembly of the wet end components. With the motor sitting on its fan cover and the outer magnet keyed onto the motor shaft, place the frame adapter on the motor and secure it with bolts and an end wrench. Set the wet end assembly into the adapter flange so that all of the up marks are in line and face the top of the frame adapter. Remember that strong forces couple the inner and outer magnet and extreme caution should be used to avoid trapping your fingers between the adapter flange and the frame adapter. Secure the adapter flange with the cap screws and the 8mm Allen wrench. Place the gasket so that it is fully seated against the rear casing. Place the casing on the unit slowly so as not to damage the gasket and secure it with the cap screws and 8mm Allen wrench. As you have seen, Magnatex MP pumps require no special training or difficult procedures to service and fully restore to a like new condition. We at Magnatex believe that the benefits of the MP series pumps will be clear to every service minded consumer.